Hi. Take Rabbit here. Yeah, I've got a small donation to the channel. So this is a very classical um, two-channel oscilloscope, and it's um, it's a Tektronic um, 453A, and a very classical version. And um, this is actually um, quite old. Um, the first version was made, it was in, uh, released in 1965, so that was before I was even born. And they made it all the way into the mid 1970s. And um, it was originally developed to help um, IBM engineers when they needed to go out and diagnose the the mainframes of the time. And and they um, actually called this a portable uh, unit. And um, the, they designed it specifically for that, so the size here is it's like a suitcase, so you can put it under the seat in an airplane. And, um, but of course, based on comparing to modern day oscilloscopes, I wouldn't really want to call it portable because it's um, 13 kilograms. <laughs> um, yeah. The performance of this oscilloscope var varies depending on what um, voltage level you're um, actually analyzing, so um, it, you can get it uh, it starts around if I understand the specs correctly it starts around 25 megahertz and then you can get up to like 50 a little bit over 50 megahertz um, that's that's the kind of range but as I said in uh, based on the spec it seems to it varies depending on what voltage division you're on um, it's also the interesting that this was um, uh, this is this is um, specified and tested according to um, a military grade standard, so it, it can actually deal with high temperatures, high humidity. It can actually, yeah, it, it can take a few knocks without um, falling to falling to bits. Uh, but anyway, um, I have actually not powered this up yet, um, so I thought we could actually just have an overview of it. Um, and then um, try and power it up and um, see if it actually does work. So yeah, I thought we'd just have a little general overview. This is a, quite a nice handle system. You press it in and then you can um, vary the position that locks into place. And it's very heavy construction, so it's actually very good to carry it around, move it around. It also works as a support when you put it like that and you have it down. Uh, and also another nifty thing is that you can actually unscrew this screw here, and that's the same on the other side. <laughs> Just lift off the cover. So, no, just no tools, nothing. Anyway, I haven't powered it on, so there's no there's no capacitors charged or anything. Anyway, here we see the basic uh, sort of conventional component circuit boards, and then here's the huge tube for the display. And then have a look at the bottom. The same bottom panel. I can just take it off. separate discrete circuit boards with separations aluminium chassis very robust built not that dirty um, the actual unit itself was quite dirty when I got it so I have spent quite a bit of time trying to clean the exterior but I decided not to be too aggressive in trying to clean up the inside since it's actually a pretty good pretty good check yeah you don't see many oscilloscopes where you can just thumb screw something Take it, up, take it apart. <laughs> okay, so I'll just put the covers back on and um, let's see if we can get it prepared for. I plugged in the unit and I just want to. Just going to use a voltmeter. This is an AC voltmeter. Just going to measure the metal part. Find out that it's at least not um, mains voltage. So it says 19 volts. And I mean, this this is the thing that in, in this older type of equipment, it's not guaranteed that the metal 
sashes is grounded in all cases. So it could be that this the the metal sashes is um, uh, that it can be floating. So, but I mean, I, what I really want to make sure is that there isn't sort of a main voltage leakage. So anyway, so this is the uh, everything. Uh, the position of all the buttons is in in random right now, so we don't know what they are. So I'm just going to actually put it on and see what happens. And then I'm going to measure against the chassis. 97 volts. And as long as I don't see um, mains voltage level, then I'm happy. That seems to have a fan in it. But um, nothing on the oscilloscope so far. And um, these are not automatic, so <laughs> you can just have one of these buttons in the wrong place, then um, you won't get any. Let's see. Oh, beam find works. So we actually have some kind of a. Okay, so I think that it's probably a. Some of these settings are not um, what they're supposed to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the usual oscilloscope um, using my oscilloscope knowledge. I'm just going to go through and see if I can reset some of this and um, see if we can get a, a line on the, um, the pitch. Ah, that was a bit embarrassing. I spent a lot of time looking at all the settings and doing all the most complicated things first and then I found out that it's this. <laughs> so it was like that. <laughs> it was just the, <laughs> move the uh, the uh, signals, in, channel one and channel two signals into place. It's a bit too bright, actually. But I must say it's quite a nice display. It's of course green and, and black. Focus, what? Backlight. So, okay, let's get a signal generator connected and see if we can see something. So, anyway, that's um, channel 1, 50 hertz, uh, 7 volts. That's my, except that I can't get it to um, trigger for some odd reason. And then the other thing that I've still a bit concerned about is this has a very high, um, nearly a hundred volts AC um, ground level on the sashes chassis. So I'm going to actually have to look that up a bit. I don't know if that's normal, but it's definitely the chassis is not grounded. That's for sure. So I think I'll actually have to look at the mains cable also to see if because if the mains plug is actually that has a, it is a grounded mains plug. So I actually have to check if the um, if the ground wires um, bust. So it might be that um, uh, yeah I'm gonna have to confirm if the um, if, the, if the ground should actually be connected. But this is this is weird that it doesn't trigger. So I'm going to try and work out what option is the one that's causing this. Okay, found it. <laughs> this is, I set everything up for you know, B triggering. And um, the A triggering group is down here. So, so, anyway, so it seems like we have a, well, basically working, working um, oscilloscope. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually only got one probe and it's uncalibrated. So that is um, 
that's what square wave looks like looks like <laughs> at um, 80 hertz <laughs> uh -huh. but uh, it could be made a bit better with um, calibration ah, okay now it's stable except that you don't get the r r raising edge or the or the you know, Now that will do, of course, the, I, I actually haven't, um, this is an original ITT, um, branded, um, probe. Must have cost, like, absolutely ludicrous amounts of money the day when it was purchased. But as I said, I haven't, um, I haven't, um, calibrated it. So, it's not surprising that it's, the square wave is off. It's not that bad. I mean, taking into account the, the generation of oscilloscope, it's not that bad. But I am going to investigate this high um, voltage on the sashes situation. I mean, it's not the main voltage, but it would be indicative of that the sashes is not grounded, and I just have to check if the um, from some sources. They actually, yeah, and that's the. Yeah, so that's it. The, the basics of basics actually work. So I'm just gonna leave it um, leave it running for a while. And I thought it would be fun to make a uh, size comparison. So this is my 200 megahertz four-channel digital oscilloscope with. Um, now the only functions that I haven't found in this one and usually they don't exist in these ones, is the X, Y function. So you can actually feed uh, an X axis um, uh, polarizer. Oh, cool. So, you, I mean, you basically, you go, you go in the Y direction and then you, or in the X direction, and then you go in the Y direction, and then you can basically, in these older oscilloscopes, you can make channel um, A B be, be the control of the sweeping in, in this, I can't remember which way around, but in one direction, and the channel B can sweep in the other direction. And there's all kinds of weird tricks you can you you can um, combine that with a, um, a frequency generator that actually has a sweep a frequency sweep signal coming out of it, so it tells you what frequency it's on. So you can then you can do a nifty filter analysis. But um, this this one actually likes that. But I, I mean, you know, it's got yeah. And then size-wise, if you think, or weight-wise, if you think that this is like that, <laughs> and it, you can carry it around very easily compared to 13 kilograms. So yeah. Anyway, just leave it running for a while and um, see if it starts smoking. Yep, yep. So anyway, this has now been running for two or three hours now, so it doesn't seem to smoke right here. Um, <clears throat> the grounding issue that I've investigated sources and I looked at the schematics and, and it says that the chassis should be grounded. Uh, the plug is a grounded plug. Um, but then it actually did have a crumpled note uh, sticker on it that was positioned around there which had some uh, Swedish words which I understand and um, it, it did, uh, if one straightened the sticker out a bit it said that it was basically saying that this is that this device is ungrounded and um, uh, you, you actually can find situations where the, uh, what the, the instrument ground has been disconnected from the mains ground and that's usually when you want to um, you want to do um, uh, me measurements on a different ground plane, so you don't w you don't want it to be grounded to the mains ground. You want it to you want to actually put it through the ground plug and connect it to another reference ground. But then, of course, you really need to know what you're doing, and, and, and those are a special circumstances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the see if they've uh, removed the grounding on the plug only, or is it an internal connection? There shouldn't actually be a, an option to switch to grounded. To switch off the ground, as as far as I can see, in the actual 
backplane of this um, oscilloscope. But you know, this is such old technology that you know you you, you can probably uh, I you, you can do things and find things that actually uh, you, if, uh, due to regulations would never ever it could not even possibly exist in modern equipment for safety reasons. But um, yeah, uh, I'll do some investigation now. But I want to have this grounded to mains ground. I mean, in in my uh, yeah, hobbyist act or activist activities on the channel, then my, my ground references um, is uh, mains ground, and I usually don't do, I have no variac or anything, or uh, I don't have big isolation transformers or anything. I don't do mains voltage measurements, yeah, basically at all, um, if they're not behind, sort of um, already transformed to something reasonable. So, anyway, we'll see what we can find. Yeah, got a bit of thunder in the background if you hear some rumbling. <laughs> thunder and lightning and rain. Uh, anyway, so that was quite easy. This is the um, plug, um, European style. And um, it's supposed to have a, well, you know, if you were grounding it, then you would use the ground wire and connect the ground wire there. But uh, it's not connected. It's just been it's just been cut off, as you see. I don't know. You can't see in the camera. But this the the actual mains cable has, uh, you know, uh, you know, line neutral and um, ground cables in it. It's just that it's um, missing here. And and the sad thing is that they I think they actually no. There is the ground screw still left. A weird design. Ah, what a really old plug. I actually, this is a Buck Elite plug, so I might actually change this out to a modern, modern plug. But we'll see. Um, ah, so that that'll fix it. So because in my in my, in my usage of the oscilloscope, I, I I it's okay for me to have this have the um, uh, yeah line voltage um, ground as a reference point up. Well, that doesn't matter. So, uh, and for safety reasons, I think it would be good to connect it up. And then um, when I um, connect it up, then if there's a um, ground fault inside the unit, then um, I have ground fault protection in the house wiring or house main circuitry. So then it will trip a breaker. So then I, w I won't die and the equipment won't die. And, and uh, nobody else will die. So that's, um, yeah, I need to get this grounded. Ah, completely side subject. When I was browsing the internet, there seemed to be a lot of people very confused about how to calibrate this or understand the calibration instructions. But um, basically, what it means is that you have a calibration signal provided here. Um, I think it said one kilohertz or something. And then uh, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to um, take the um, T connector, which looks like BNC T connector. It can be. I actually got this with the scope. But um, you can buy these, and then a 50 ohm uh, BNC cable. So you divide the um, calibration signal up, and then you need to feed the signal into both channels. So this is the B channel. And <laughs> the problem is actually I don't have two BNC cables, so I'm going to actually have to buy one one extra. But then you take the other one and you put it into channel one. So basically, it's feeding the calibration signal at the same time into both channels. So that's just to clarify what it physically looks like for those on the internet that didn't seem to really understand the instruction. So I fixed the plug. And, uh, we'll see what will happen. If the lights go out, then it's um, called a ground fault. Well, at least it doesn't trigger when I, when I just plug it in. Measure the ground. A nice. Okay, at least when it's off, then it's a nice zero AC. Now let's try and put it on and see what happens. Okay, sounds like it's starting up. And then I measure the voltage against ground, which is that one. And a nice zero volts. 
So now we have a grounded oscilloscope. And then to be sure that it hasn't broken anything, we'll plug in the signal. And the signal seems to work. So now I'm just going to let it run. Now the thing is that this hasn't been grounded for, yeah, it could be 20 years. <laughs> so, you know, so now it's got a, a ground plane, including the whole sashes. So, so uh, yeah. There's, there's no absolute guarantee that the insulation will hold internally. There could be some component that's very close to the ground and then it might go zap. So the only way to test it for hobbyist use is to, is to uh, keep it under observation and run it for several hours. So anyway, as I was <coughs> saying, the user manual actually contains some circuit diagrams. So I was actually able to um, check the power supply input and the plug. And thankfully, they've actually drawn it here, so they were showing that it had a, it was actually grounded. So I, I could double confirm that this um, this instrument actually uh, it was intended to be run um, grounded, and and then that led to me checking why is the ground missing, since the, obviously the chassis wasn't grounded. Uh, but anyway, that's fixed now. It's um, still running, and there's no sign of smoke or anything so and um that was this last detail I'd like to show on these um instructions which is you know they they have um basically I mean they uh, kind of cool because they they've given each circuit board is to, is depicted with all the uh, component numberings there's a list of all the components it's further up, up in the document, we won't look at it now. And um, then also they have specific measurement points um, in the on the circuit board that you can um, you could measure to um, ident and then it should show a specific signal under a specific... I haven't read under what conditions the, those signals exist, but um, you know, basically that's throughout. So you have the circuit diagram, you have the board layout, um, you know, and then in certain circumstances you also have what what the yeah like down here is again another section where there's expected signals. So in theory you could try and fix one of these because you actually have you have the circuit diagram you you have a certain um, you know you have certain checkpoints and then um, it's even given what signals are expected to be at those checkpoints and you have the component list so. If you need to replace something, then <laughs> I mean, whether any of these components are still available, of course, is, yeah. Uh, but of course, this is a very fr from its generations. This is one of like first generation transistor implementations. So um, yeah, maybe some of them have continued to live. But um, you know, transistors. If you could find the data sheet of the one that's broken you might be able to replace it with something else by adjusting some of the resistors or the voltage dividers and still get it to work the same way but um, you know this kind of stuff you don't get nowadays and um, well, yeah like, oh just heap loads of nice information and I mean what you could do is you could use this on ed for educational purposes you can actually look at how I mean like for example I mean what does a vertical output amplifier look like that this is, this is a vertical output amplifier <laughs> so you could even have that like a you know overview of a module um, now what I'm scrolling for ah here I was scrolling for it actually has a block diagram of the whole system so it shows what what um, circuit boards you have, and then how the circuit boards interact with each other, and what is the role of each circuit board. So, uh, that, is, that is really cool.